started, you need a, a promoter, and uh, we indicate that by using an arrow. And the next part is a ribosomal binding site. So that's the place on the RNA where the ribosomes will bind on the gene. Then you need the coding sequence itself. So this is actually the code that um, encodes the protein that you're going to build. And then the gene needs to enter the terminator and uh, use a stop sign for this. If you want to use this in a functional cell, uh, the DNA needs to be circular. So you insert your newly designed gene into a plasmid, it's called. A plasmid is a uh, circular piece of DNA. And uh, when you, once you assemble this, it's, it's, it's complete and you can introduce it into a cell to use it. Okay. And it works? And it works every single time. <laughs> You'll make uh, this genetic uh, system. It's a banana odor generator. It's a very simple genetic system. Uh, it's a very simple sequence of different elements that will, uh, if you introduce them into a bacteria, the bacteria will be, will be able to produce a banana smell. And uh, on this website, I already listed all the, all the DNA parts that we're going to use. So it's the, the backbone, so it's this part. Uh, there are so-called prefixes and suffixes, which are the standardized places where you can cut the <coughs> DNA. Which I will use a uh, ZR repressible promoter. It means it's a promoter that you can turn off uh, if you would add uh, tetracycline to the, to the cell. But we also use a ribo ribosomal binding site, and the acyl transferase, so that's actually a gene that encodes for the molecule that the enzyme that uh, will produce the uh, banana smell, and we'll use two uh, terminators. Uh, if you open up Gene Designer, it's a basic tool that allows you to compose uh, DNA, um, but first we'll kind of configure it for using BioBricks. There's also a menu called uh, Configure. And then you can configure restriction sites. So it will open up another window. And here there's a big list of all the different uh, restriction enzymes there are in nature. And every en enzyme can cut DNA at a, at a, at a different uh, spot. There's a certain recognition sequence. But for BioBricks, we only use uh, four, four uh, uh, restriction enzymes. So we're going to make a small group. Uh, and, and put those four in them, because then you can easily find them, otherwise you have to search all the time. So we just call this biobrick uh, restriction enzymes. And we'll look for the four basic uh, restriction enzymes. One is called EcoR1, or uh, we say one in, when you pronounce it, but it's actually in, in a capital I. So, and you can just simply drag it to the group. And we can also, we also have to use PST1, this one, XBA1, and SPE1. So why did they choose these particular Yeah, they are uh, cheap, so they're widely available, um, and they have very distinct recognition sites, which are short. So you can, uh, you can insert them everywhere that you want and they are easily and also reliably cut by these enzymes. So just, this is ease of use. Yeah. On the website already I put a link the, to the PSB1A3. That's the plasmid background. That's, you, go to, you go to the parts registry, so this is like the, the, the database of all DNA uh, elements that you can use. Scroll down and say, get the selected sequence. So then, if you click on it, you get the DNA sequence. And it's a so-called high copy number plasmid. So if you introduce this backbone into a cell, it will be reproduced in a high number. So it will be 
there will be many, many copies of it in, in a cell, so the protein that you want to produce. Will lot, it will create a lot of, yeah. And then go to the catalog of parts. Yeah. yeah. And there's a long list of all the parts that are available. Okay, so that's the uh, promoters. And placement back mounts is here. So you can simply select it, copy it. Yeah, completely copy it and insert it into your. Okay. So. Only fill in the DNA, not the rest. Yeah. So now you have a plasma backbone in your program. And we're also going to add another part. We need another part, of course, because we want to clone something. So we want to combine the backbone to another part. And we'll start with the promoter. So we need to drag another DNA element into this. Yeah, promoters are very simple sequences. So they basically what they do, they attract uh, the, the RNA polymerase, which is the, the enzyme that produces RNA. Mm -hmm. And that's a very, very small uh, sequence. And the prefix and suffix I don't need? Uh, we'll, we'll do that in the next step. Yeah. So you get select the sequence, and you get it. Okay, so now we have the promoter. We have to do the same trick for the prefix and the suffix. There are two types of prefixes, and one is one suffix. And it depends whether your the yeah the, the sequence that you put the prefix in front of starts with the ATG or not. So you have to use you have to pick you have to look at the sequence that you're using and then pick one of the prefixes. We'll just use the, the one on the bottom. You just have to load it into the program now, and then I'll show you uh, well, how we'll deal, we'll deal with that. Take a new DNA element, and we call it so prefix. And also the suffix. And after that, we can do some cloning. We'll take the promoter sequence and put the prefix in front of it and the suffix behind it. So you now have the sequence in order. And you can also look at the sequence directly. And you can uh, browse through the sequence. You can see it's color coded, so it's easy to, uh, to see which part is the promoter and which part is the suffix. It's a new screen. And you can simply drag your construct, your new construct. You can drag it to the code. The suffix is now in, inside the cloning tool. And this is where the restriction enzymes uh, become useful again. So you have this little area here. And you can select your uh, BioBricks restriction uh, enzyme. And they're still here. You can use Shift to select them all. And take choose. Now you can see that there are four sites indicated on your cluster where you can cut your DNA. So there's a SPE1 site, XPA1 site, PSC1, and also ECOR1. So now you have a place where you can cut your DNA. So normally you would have to do this in the lab. You put DNA into your test tube, then you add the, the protein, the restriction enzyme, SPE1. Then you wait for, uh, for a while, half an hour, a couple hours. Yeah. Wait until the enzyme cuts the DNA and then you can extract it again. Ta da! This, now this saved us a couple of hours uh, in the lab. <laughs> now we have one new, uh, new DNA part. It's been cut by PST1 and EcoR1. And you can simply drag it to the final clone. So then, if you later on want to combine them, you simply cut them out and put them into one uh, new uh, plasmid. Okay, so then you only have to then you have that you can only change the DNA part later. Yeah. So the next thing we'll do is we'll pick the uh, plasmid backbone. Make sure you, you drag your final product to the right side, otherwise you'll lose it. Drop the plasmid backbone into the cloning tool. So now you can start cutting the uh, backbone. Again, you need to choose the, the uh, restriction enzymes. And this time again, you, you will cut them with the same uh, uh, enzymes as the previous one. 
So it's ECAR1 and PST1. And so now again you've cut uh, the DNA. When, when you do this, you always have to make sure that you use the same cuts, otherwise it's yeah. not going to And what you'll see if you, we dra drag this one to the other side, you'll see that the uh, overlapping area, so the remaining piece of DNA, yeah. uh, they fit. This side fits to that side, and this side fits to that side. Because they've been cut with the same enzymes. So now what you have, this, this area on the right is like a test tube, where you have your promoter construct with the prefixing suffix, and you have your backbone. And all you need to do now is to put them two together. Normally you would add a ligase, which is an enzyme that sticks two pieces of DNA together. Now we just click on clone. And now you have a, a fully functional piece of DNA. It seems that we, we, took the, we took the backbone and we cut a piece out off of that and we have a piece of DNA that has our promoter and prefix and the suffix and we cut some off of that yeah. and then it happens that the parts of uh, where the promoter DNA is attached to, it attaches perfectly to the backbone uh, on the one side and the other side so you get the circular piece of DNA. Yeah. But you also get a lot of junk where the, the small little pieces reattach to the things and in reality, normally in the test tube you would also get... Uh, okay, so your yield is a lot lower than you would expect. Yeah. Okay. There are two ends to each piece, and they attach to each other. So first, you know, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, you understand? Okay, so in the end it's, it's circular. That's why always when you use a genetic cloning tool, you always have a, a view in which you can look at your DNA in a circular way. That's just the standard way of visualizing plasmids. So it's not a perfect circle. Okay. Uh, in, in reality, it's just a flowing uh, thing. So this is your plasmid backbone. That you can see it over here, in including all the different parts. So you can also rename it if you double-click on the on the name. So promoter biobrick. So, in this screen you have on the bottom, you have a number of buttons. You can go to sequence, you can look at the sequence. Uh, and if you go to icons, you see it looking at it like this. Yeah, from here, and you drag it this time. Oh, okay. Step before that. So, how do you get it? Like this. Oh. So, two pieces and hit clone. So always make sure the prefix is last and not first in the, in the construct. And in the end you will, you will have the full uh, assembly and if you then would order DNA and put it into a cell in a legal environment of course, in safety, then you would be able to also make the uh, banana smell. to make these kind of designs. The, one of the aims of the program is that you can analyze what happens if you introduce or uh, make a new system on top of this. So for example, what if you would take this, this part of the network and for example don't want to have a cyclic cycle, cyclic cycle, you want to cross out a certain part, this program can, will be able to analyze what will happen. We will just build a simple network. This is the system that we're going to build. Uh, you might recognize this part. Um, it's uh, the promoter again, the ribosome binding site, the gene that we're going to use, and of course the terminator. So this is like a standard bio brick, and we add one more part in front of it. I haven't shown it to you yet, but there are some certain genetic sequences we call activators, and uh, those sequences uh, attract. Uh, certain molecules that can activate the gene, like, like a switch, and can turn it on. You need a promoter for everything? Yeah. When you build this, after you build this, you can calculate all the steps. It will, uh, the program will give you all the equations for all the steps, so you don't have to do that yourself anymore. This program basically has a layout over here. You can show all the components that you need. For example, start with the parts. Again, 
all the elements that you, we've used before are stated over here. Promoters, uh, genes, everything. And we also have molecules, so enzymes, transcription factors. And you can set uh, the way that they uh, influence each other. So reactions and also regulations. So one molecule can activate the other or it can block the other or enzymes can, can convert certain chemicals. But once you have made a system, you can start using the simulations. And this is really this is the most powerful part of the program. And uh, we'll, in the end, we'll do a deterministic simulation. And that is a simulation in which we assume a lot of things to be stable. But in reality, we would always use a stochastic simulation, because in reality, cells are always chaos. And uh, lots of stuff is going on. So in a stochastic simulation, you will just constantly vary temperature and chemical <coughs> concentration and everything. And then you get a more realistic uh, simulation. So we'll start just by dragging all the components in to make a uh, bio brick again. The driver's on binding side, and the coding sequence for the enzyme and the terminator. And if you drag them, you can just link them like this, drag them on top of each other. So this is the same, what I do now by dragging and dropping is what we did in the first workshop. It took us an hour, now, <laughs> now I just drag and drop it. So, So, now we've completed this entire part. Then we, we add one more part, is the act, activate the binding site. It's also a piece of DNA. Are you able to re reproduce this? Yeah. Uh, filling in other values of the network, then you'll see it will change. But this is all interactive, so... Yeah, this transcription factor can bind to this uh, site. Therefore, you can select the function transcription regulation. That's the name of the process. You just click it like this. Then you get another question, is this uh, activation or not? And uh, we just say yes, this is activation. Yeah, so now okay. we've made a simple interaction between a transcription factor and the, and the gene. So now the transcription factor is a protein and the oh, gene is uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a piece of DNA. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> We can continue with all the parts. Yeah. So remember, in, in the first example, we have the gene. Of course, we need to make the enzyme. An enzyme is a, is a red bulb, red red core. Just drag it, and then we have the enzyme. And also this time, we have to make a relation between the two. So this is like soldering. Say, so, okay, I want uh, a protein production relationship between the gene and the protein. So there's, there's this button on the regulation uh, slide, so it's called protein production. So I click on it, I say, okay, I want this gene, the Lexi gene, to produce... Oh. It does all sorts oh. of things, <laughs> which I have no idea. Some enzymes work differently than others. Yeah, so right? you can fill it in. If you take the enzyme, uh, you can, for example, set the degradation rate, so the, the rate in which the... Uh, Enzymes uh, get t torn down because they get produced by the gene. Yeah. You can also set the rate at which they get uh, demolished again. So what kind of things are, are relevant for this? So the degradation rate, I can imagine, but yeah. also probably the enzyme also has effect on other enzymes or other things. So then you would have to add those relationships. But I, I guess that you know those relationships. There are lots <coughs> of those relationships. So yeah. So you to get any any make. Uh, simulation that has any sense, so that's you have to add like giant lists of. Yeah, so then you first okay. make your first simulation, then you do it in a lab and okay. time compare your okay. results from the lab to your simulation. And okay. if there's a big difference, you know that <laughs> yeah. you have to improve okay. your model. Alright. You first design something in a program like this, then you let it just print out the DNA sequence, and then you can compare your results to what you predicted. So. It's about really about design. It's not, not just research. You may look at plants growing. You really want to design something, then see if it works. But this enzyme is going to uh, turn one chemical into the other. So we have to add two uh, molecules. And now we can uh, make a relationship between the enzyme and, and the two molecules. And we call it a, a enzyme catalysis. 
catalyzes. So it means the enzyme will change this molecule and that one. So you click on it, click the molecule. The reaction is there, and uh, you can also zoom in on it. The reaction itself also has a certain uh, formula I can show you. Console window. This is where the nerds get excited. EC1. So that's the EC1 is the reaction from the enzyme with the molecule. And you can see here, it gives you the rate equation. This basically says that the, the speed of the reaction depends on the concentration of the, of the enzyme. That's it. So, and also the, the speed, of course, of the reactions. Now we need one more part because we want to, the system to be light activated. So take another molecule, we call it a receptor. A receptor is a molecule that can detect signals from outside the cell, whether they're chemical or they're, uh, for example, light. So we just add the receptor, you drag and drop. And the receptor is CPH8, that's the name of the enzyme. And we can make a, re uh, a reaction again. It's called allosteric inhibition. That's a technical term for one protein inter interacting with the other. So it's a special type of reaction. And you click on it, you click this one and that one. And for some reason it's always in the red line, I can't change that. And uh, in reality, what this molecule does, it adds a, a, a phosphor group to this molecule. When light hits this receptor, CPH8, then it will make a, uh, a phosphate group. Uh, it will attach it to the OPMR molecule. And that's what we can show graphically by right-clicking on the uh, molecule and can add a decorator. So, just click on it. And there you have three different kinds of things you can add to a uh, molecule. And I want to add phosphorylation, which means that uh, the receptor binds a phos phosphorus group to the uh, OPMR. So, click this and ta-da, the shiny uh, phosphate group is there. Now we need to make the cell. Click on the canvas and then we can drag the cell around the system. Make sure that the receptor is on the edge of the, of the cell because the receptor will stick out, it will be able to sense light. So it has to be inside, both inside and outside of the cell. So the program also knows now that the receptor is both on the inside and outside. Add one more thing, and that's of course the light. Because the light turns on this receptor, that turns on this OPMR, that turns on the gene that produces the enzyme, and the enzyme produces the color. In this program, for some reason, light is also a molecule, which is of course, is not true, but yeah. The Re reaction we have to add, it's activation reaction between the light <laughs> and the receptor. Now we, have to, now we have the full system, so now we can really do a simulation. But before we can do that, we have to kind of define what's the first step, otherwise the program doesn't know where to start. So on inputs you can say, I have a step input, and that's this one, the light. It now gives you extra, extra values. I'll kind of show a little bit more. Wait. But you can change the to uh, 200 oh. or something. So now you change the initial value from 15 micromotors to 200 micromotors. So we can do. What? We can, and now we made like a simple system. It's a couple of reactions, so light is the receptor, receptor is the description factor, the factor is the T. The T makes the enzyme, the enzyme converts this molecule. So if we now do simulation, deterministic simulation, we can fill in a number of steps that we want to do. I think 100 seconds is okay. And here you can fill in how many steps you want to do in, those, in that period of time. So between 0 and 100, you do 100 steps. So you have one step every second. And you can hit play. Does it, does it look like this on your screen? No. no. Yeah. So you say, okay, the enzyme kind of deteriorates much faster than I assumed in the beginning. Then you can also see that the other lines are changing concentration. Oh, yeah. So if it's 0 0.1, yeah. um, yeah, after about 
20 seconds, there's the, all the X gals depleted. And if I increase the degradation rate of the enzyme, then there will be uh, the full color will be done after 30 seconds. If you wonder, like, where do I have to take it from here? So after the design, how do I make the DNA? How do I put it into a bacterium? It's shown in this uh, document in a very comprehensive, uh, comprehensive way. Of course, remember you need to have a license lab for this, so don't do it at home. But if you wonder how it's done, it's pretty well described, and it also shows the. Uh, Americans can do this at home, right? Yeah, they do it at home. Yeah, if, you, if you fly to the US, you can do it there anywhere. But uh, yeah, here in Europe, you can't. <laughs>